Good morning, everyone. It's good to be with you again. And today we're going to have our last little thought about uh, forgiveness. We've talked about forgiveness and uh, defined it as something that you do in your own heart. Um, we've talked about three things about forgiveness, that Jesus forgave those who did not deserve it, that he forgave those who didn't ask for it, and that he forgave those who continued to sin against him. So if we follow Jesus' example and if we forgive in this way, it raises some questions. It raises a question of what does that mean for me? Does that mean I'm just going to get walked over? Does that mean I just forgive everybody, let them do whatever they want, and I just let it go? Do I just let them continue to hurt me without doing anything about it? The topic I want to talk about today is the idea of forgiving and forgetting. Because we read passages like Psalm 103.12 that says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Or Isaiah 1.18 that says, Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be white as the snow. And verses like this make us think that forgiveness is forgetting. In other words, if I forgive you, then I'll never remember or bring up what you did again. It's like wiping the slate clean and saying, all right, now we'll never think about that again. And sometimes someone will hold it against us. If we remind them that something like that happened, they'll say, well, I thought you forgave me. But forgiveness does not mean that we have to forget and let someone hurt us over and over and over again. And I want to point out to you something in David's relationship with Saul, where we see this. You know, David saved Saul's life. If you remember the story, he finds him in a cave, and it's dark, and he has the opportunity to kill Saul. But instead of killing him, he cuts the end of his robe off. Then when Saul goes out, David comes before him and says, look, I could have killed you, but I, I had compassion on you. I gave you grace. I forgave you. I did not do this thing to you. And to his credit, Saul repents. In 1 Samuel 26, 21, it says, Saul said, I have sinned. Come back, David, my son, because you considered my life precious today. I will not try to harm you again. Surely I have acted like a fool and have erred greatly. That's beautiful, right? David tells Saul he's forgiven. Saul responds with repentance. Wonderful. But look what happens. David accepts his repentance, but not his invitation. Their relationship has changed. At the end of that passage in 1 Samuel 26, 25, it says, so David went on his way and Saul returned home. Remember, Saul said, David, come home with me. Be my son again. Be a child in my house again. And David said, no, no, <laughs> I forgive you and we're good now, but there's a history here. Something has happened. Our relationship has changed. I'm going my way, you go your way. See, we are forgiven by God completely and our sins are separated from us as far as the East is from the West. They'll never be held against us again. But folks, they are not forgotten by any means. God does not have amnesia. God remembers our sins and our failings for the purpose of disciplining us and, and helping us for our own benefit. You know, if someone steals from me, I will forgive them. But I'll also remember it. I'm not going to forget, not for the purpose of judging them, but for the purpose of helping them so that I can make sure they're not put in that same temptation again. If someone is unrepentant and continues to hurt me, well, I'll forgive them for the sake of my own soul. I'll forgive them so that I don't hold that bitterness in my heart. But the, our relationship will change. I don't need to allow myself to be abused over and over and over again just to say, I've forgiven you. You know, there was a case of a husband and a wife expressing forgiveness to a woman who had struck and killed their son while driving under the influence of alcohol. They were genuinely expressing their desire and their wish to forgive this woman and to wish her well. As an expression of their faith, they wanted her to know the love of Christ. Yet their forgiveness didn't erase the consequences of her actions, right? They forgave her, there was reconciliation there, but she still had to face prosecution and jail time. She still had to go through therapy and realize that she has a problem, go through rehab and deal with her addiction. So thankfully, God does not forgive and forget. 
and neither should we. We should forgive and remember so that we can be a blessing and build strong relationships based on mutual love and trust. This is what Paul means when he says, speak the truth to one another in love. We need to be sure we remember and speak in love to each other. God bless you and have a beautiful Monday.